found 36 of the best FPS protagonists, went to challenge.com and put them all in a bracket. Then, for the past month, every day, I've been putting out polls and letting you guys decide what is the best FPS protagonist in FPS history. Now, when I put out these polls, I didn't elaborate anything. I left it ambiguous. What does best FPS protagonist of all time mean? To you, it may just be your favorite. Maybe you think they'll win in a fight. Or maybe you'll take the words literally, like kind of how I imagined in my head, and think it's the best well-written character, the one that fits their universe the best. But I made sure of one thing. I had no input on who won this bracket. Round one, Caleb from the Monolith Classic Blood. I live again. Blood is a game that is a cult classic with a character that's an absolute psycho. All-powerful shotgun in one hand and dynamite in the other. He's going up against Daniel Garner, a forgotten protagonist from the classic Painkiller. Daniel kills literal hundreds, maybe thousands of enemies across the course of his game. Unfortunately, Painkiller hasn't exactly been very relevant in the last 10 years or so, so I didn't really expect him to get many votes. And yeah, Caleb won this pretty handily. 78% handily. Next up was the doozy of round one. We have Jack Cooper from Titanfall 2 against Postal Dude. Obviously from post. Now, something I didn't clarify is that I kind of just assumed people would put BT with Jack Cooper. I mean, they're kind of connected, not literally, but close enough. However, no one took it this way. They kind of just ranked it as Jack Cooper himself, which I guess is fair. No one else gets to rank with two other characters. Regardless, he's written fairly well, but he as a character himself doesn't exactly stand out without BT. Postal Dude, on the other hand, stands out for all of the reasons I would not want. Just gonna be honest, I'm not a fan of Postal Dude. I've never really understood Postal's humor, just seems like it comes across humor for edgy 15 year olds. You do you, but the one thing I did realize very quickly is that holy hell do Postal fans leave annoying comments. I hope he doesn't win so I don't have to read any more of those. Oh damn it. Oh, we got some more classics here. Lo Wang from Shadow Warrior. Now, I didn't specify whether I meant old Lo Wang or the Shadow Warrior reboot Lo Wang. Old Lo Wang probably doesn't age particularly well, but the reboots were pretty good. I kind of left it ambiguous, but I did use art from the old one. He's going up against Ranger from Quake, and this is interesting to me because I don't think people really recognize Ranger as an iconic character, despite the fact that Quake is such an influential game. I mean, how many Quake likes have come out in the last eight years or so. But if I showed anyone a picture of Ranger, I don't think most people would recognize that that's the Quake character. And yeah, Lo Wang won, 63%. Now this next one was a little bit different. I wanted a stand-in for Killing Floor, but I didn't know who to use. The two obvious ones that popped up to me were Mr. Foster and DJ Scully. These seem to be the most common characters used in Killing Floor. Hell, Mr. Foster even became the poster child for Killing Floor 2. However, there's the meme character from Killing Floor 1, Harold Lott. The Dosh Man. Loads of money. I just had to throw him in. The results to this poll really surprised me. I thought this would be kind of even between DJ Scully and Mr. Foster, but I think DJ Scully is the more liked character visually. And I thought Harold Lott would be in last place, but not by very much because he is the meme character. A lot of people like him. But oh my God, that is not how that played out at all. Mr. Foster easily won. A little weird, but I guess people like their gas masks. Better they just recognize the character from the posters of Killing Floor 2. All right, now we're getting into the real stuff. Even though this is technically round two, it's basically round one for most of these characters. And the first set of round two is Doomslayer himself against Caleb. Yeah, Caleb, you won last round. You get a date with Doomslayer. Congratulations. Doomslayer, if anything, is the icon of FPS games. He's not exactly the OG, but pretty close to it. Doom has never had a bad game. Yes, that includes Doom 3. And with the Doom reboots, he has cemented his legacy. I saw a lot of people saying that he had no personality. He was just a silent, angry dude. And no, so many video essays have come out showing how much personality he shows without even saying a word in Doom 2016. And that's why people like him so much, along with just being a badass. It also helps that Doom Eternal will go down as one of the best first person shooters ever made. I also got a surprising amount of comments from people saying they would vote for Doom Slayer if it was Doom Guy instead. Doom Guy is Doom Slayer. They're the same person. Doom has had the same protagonist from Doom 1, 2, 64, 2016, and Doom Eternal. The only games where Doom Slayer is not the main protagonist is Doom 3 and Resurrection of Evil, where they're just 
Doom Marines. Also, Doom Slayer from the reboots is awesome. Your objective will be wrong if you think he's lame. Shouldn't be a surprise that Doom Slayer won by 87%. Yeah, this was a blowout. Next up, we got Noble Six from Halo Reach against V1 from Ultra Kill. Noble Six is another silent protagonist, a stand-in from the player. However, he has a history and fits into this universe well. People especially remember him for his final stand at the end of Reach. V1, on the other hand, is an all-powerful god of a robot that lives off of blood. If you're talking about pure badassery, V1 wins hands down. If we're talking about personality, this all depends on if the ship host from the Ultra Kill community count as personality. <laughs> God never allows pain without a purpose! Ah, I'm disintegrating! Ah, ah. I myself would have voted for V1 here, but community disagreed because Halo was very popular. Noble Six wins. Got another Halo boy, we got the Arbiter. And on the other side, we got Jack from Bioshock. Jack is a bit outmatched. To be honest, could you really say what Jack looks like? You can remember the situations he's thrown in. The game is memorable, but Jack himself I wouldn't say is exactly a memorable protagonist. The Arbiter, on the other hand, can be argued for the best character in all of Halo. Halo 2 is a deep game, and a lot of that is thanks to the Arbiter. It helps that the Arbiter just simply will not die. What would you have your Arbiter do? Yeah. Arbiter won by quite a bit. I was worried about this next round because I thought maybe people would vote for the more popular franchise. We have Jackie Estacado from The Darkness against Barney Calhoun from Blue Shift. Barney as a playable protagonist in Blue Shift is, well, a silent protagonist. Honestly, not really very memorable. However, he plays a big role in Half-Life 2. It's me, Gordon, Barney from Black Mesa. That's not really what we're judging today, but I figured people would remember that more, so they might vote him. Jackie Estacado, on the other hand, has one of the deepest stories in all of gaming, let alone first-person shooters. Even with all this darkness shit on his back, you can relate to this character. The story of the darkness is incredibly depressing. He doesn't act like a comic book character in the first game. I love this character, and he should have won this set. Oh, he did. 68%. So close to being nice. Next up, your date for winning the previous round, Postal Dude, is BJ Blazkowicz. Blazkowicz is the reason why I said Doom Slayer isn't the OG. That would be BJ. He spent his entire life fighting tyranny, but he also became a relatable character. There's a lot of comments from people saying the new Wolfenstein games ruined BJ as a character, and no, please shut up. One bad game of Youngblood where he's not even the main protagonist doesn't ruin him as a character. And no, the new Colossus wasn't bad. Sorry, Postal Dude, you simply cannot compete. BJ won by 77%. Nomad from the original Crisis against Artyom from Metro. Now, I wanted a stand-in for Crisis because I thought the series was prominent enough to have one. I could have used Profit, but I felt like going with the original Protag from the first game. That said, maybe I should have gone with Profit because Nomad's not really that memorable. He's kind of just a silent protagonist. You really only remember him for the suit. Artyom, though, is definitely memorable. He's kind of a silent protagonist. You only really hear him talking during the loading screens, but that's more than enough to give him personality. He fits the universe he's in incredibly well. People love this guy. He won by 79%. Now we got one of the 90s classics, Duke Nukem, against one of the forgotten greats, Boss, from Republic Commando. I could have put any of the squad from Republic Commando, but this was supposed to be about playable FPS protagonists. Boss is still an incredibly good character, and personally, I would have voted for him here. There's just so much personality in this squad, and man, we're never gonna get a sequel to this damn game. Duke Nukem, however, even with its recent struggles, has a legacy, and he won by 65%. Man, here are a couple of heavy hitters. Sergeant Cortez from Time Splitters against Alex Vance from Half-Life. Alex wouldn't usually be in here, but Alex is a playable protagonist from Half-Life Alex. I think most people really like Alex because she's a well-written character in Half-Life 2, but she's a good character in her own game as well. That said, she doesn't come close to the amount of personality behind Cortez. Yeah! Time to split! I'll get the next one. Should be a blowout win. Are you kidding me? I like Alex as much as the next guy, but man, I guess it's just been too long since we've had a Time Splitters game, and we're never getting another one. <sighs> ah, damn it! Space Man! Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Lo Wang won his round one, and his date for winning that round goes against Master Chief. Good luck. Yeah, Master Chief won by 86%. Nothing more needs to be said here. Here's another round I got concerned about. Rex Power Cult versus Adrian Shepard from Opposing Force. If you can't tell, I really like Blood Dragon. 
But I'm not letting my biases decide what character wins and what character doesn't. Rex Power Cult is written very well as a parody, but a parody you get invested in. When Ubisoft went out of their way and hired Michael Bean to voice this character, they knew what they were doing. Blood Dragon is arguably the best Far Cry game, and there's a reason for that. On the other side, Adrian Shepard is a badass, but he's a silent protagonist badass that doesn't exactly fit the universe as well as, say, Gordon would. He's not bad by any means, and we still need an Opposing Force too. It's stupid that Opposing Force is not a canon game. That said, I don't think he holds a candle to Rex Power Cult, and yeah, Rex won by 71%. We got another silent protagonist. We got Point Man from the original Fear against Talset from Turok. Point Man as a protagonist is someone I don't actually have a whole lot to say about. I think everything about him is more defined by the situation and circumstance he found himself in. Make no mistake, he absolutely rips enemies apart, slows down time, has the strongest legs since Chun-Li, but as a well-written FPS protagonist, he's fine. Uh, again, the story is written pretty well, just not so much for him specifically. Tal Set, on the other hand, is the original dinosaur hunter that's more involved in his story. Unfortunately, Turok has been MIA for too long, I guess, and Fear won by 80%. That and I'm sure most of my viewers really like Fear because I talk about it so much and because it's damn amazing. Don't tell anyone, but I would have voted for Point Man here too. All right, we got the first Call of Duty protagonist to show up, Soap McTavish, and his opponent is Tommy Tawoody. We got a generic military man with virtually no personality against someone that has some of the best personality in one of the most well-written stories of the mid-2000s. Certainly, certainly people aren't going to vote Soap McTavish just because it's Call of Duty. I hate Call of Duty. Mr. Foster won his round one, and his date for winning his round one is the OG silent protagonist Gordon Freeman. Yeah. This was the most lopsided poll in the entire bracket. 92% to Gordon Freeman. Sorry, Mr. Foster, you never stood a chance. Samus is a character I don't think most people would think of when you're talking about the best FPS protagonist, but Metroid Prime 1, 2, and 3 are legendary games. Samus absolutely counts as an FPS protagonist in this context. And Samus's opponent is another generic military man, James Ramirez, someone that people only remember because he's a meme. Ramirez. Surely people won't vote for Call of Duty again. Okay, okay, thank God they didn't. Here is the closest set of the entire bracket. The first time either of them have shown up. We have Serious Sam against Kyle Katarn. Sam Stone has killed thousands, if not millions of enemies in his games. He's also a complete goofball that could be hilarious at times. Oh, yourself. Uh -oh. Serious Sam games are classics. Nothing did what those games did back then. But Kyle Katarn, the character that kicked off the Jedi Knight franchise? Well, I'll let Civvy speak for me. Dark Forces introduced a character to the extended universe that you may have heard of. Kyle motherfucking Katarn. Kyle Katarn, or as he's known in this Star Wars wiki that I cherry-picked, God has a certain level of mimetic infamy. The Chuck Norris of the Star Wars universe. Either one of these characters could win and I would not care. I don't know who to vote for here. They're both awesome. I'm just hoping for a Dark Forces 2 remake. So what did you guys think? Well, this one was pretty close. 56% went to Serious Sam. I don't blame you if you're disappointed by that. I don't know who I'd go for. Next up is another doozy. Alex Mason from Black Ops 1 against Rookie from ODST. Now, Rookie is your silent protagonist stand-in from that game. And to be honest, meh. He's, he's fine. I honestly don't have too much to say about him. I don't think he's quite as good as some other silent protagonists, but he's also not bad. Alex Mason, on the other hand, is one of the only Call of Duty protagonists that I'm not upset at for getting any votes. The numbers, Mason. What do they mean? In fact, I would go so far as to say he is easily the best written character in all of Call of Duty, and it's not even close. His story isn't generic Spunk Gargle Wee Wee. He has an actual personality with real motives. Black Ops 1 is probably the only Call of Duty campaign I can play and not want to die. But beating a Halo character is a tall task. But he apparently succeeded with 60% of the votes. That sets up our top 16. If I was running a tournament, this is where all sets would start to be streamed. Just like how I streamed the results to my Twitch twitch.tv slash jarek 4 gamingdragon Come hang out if you want to just talk and do fun stuff like this. Anyway, first set in top 16 is Doomslayer against Noble Six. I'm sorry, Noble Six, you're a side character in Halo and Doomslayer is the icon of FPS games. This is a hard sell and yeah, this is a blowout, 82%. Oh man, this one makes me sad. 
The Arbiter versus Jackie as Takato. I love both these characters so much. Jackie's powers make him so cool, but more importantly, he is relatable. But the same thing can be said about the Arbiter. I wouldn't really care who won here. So let's see what you guys said. Yeah, it was the Arbiter by a pretty large chunk, 71%. Probably should have been closer, but eh, it's fine. Next up are two protagonists that fight for similar causes. BJ Blaskowitz gets Arteum for Metro. Personally, I'd say BJ deserves this one. I'd say he's a better written character and he's a better fighter. Not that that's the point of Artyom, he does a lot in his games. The universe is probably more interesting in Metro, but not the main FPS protagonist. And yeah, BJ won by 66%. Respectable loss though, that's closer than I thought it'd be. Next up are two characters that couldn't be any different from each other. Duke Nukem is a character that I don't think has aged particularly well. He's basically an 80s parody that comes across too serious. Maybe cool when you're a teenager, but as an adult, eh. I don't get it. Alex Vance, on the other hand. Do you hate women? Of course you do. You're a gamer. Nope, that doesn't actually apply here. Alex is such a well-written character that people don't even notice. Seriously, how many times have you had a female lead in an FPS game and people didn't complain? As annoying as it is, because it really changes nothing, Alex is just such a well-loved character that no one really complained about playing as Alex in Half-Life Alex. They definitely complained about needing a VR headset, but that's a conversation for another day. Regardless, this is still really tough for Alex to win. She's a side character in a really popular franchise, but Duke Nukem has a legacy. A legacy that made him win by 73%. Man, I think we've gotten to the part of the bracket where I just kind of don't want people to lose sometimes. I love both Master Chief and Rex Power Cold. As a character, I probably like Rex more than Master Chief, but I have way more attachment to Halo. I think most people do, and yeah, Master Chief won by a lot. 83%, won by probably too much to be honest. Next up, we got the silent protagonist of Point Man against the generic military man of Soap McTavish. Okay, it's a Call of Duty character from Modern Warfare. Let's just give him the win. Holy shit, he lost. Yeah, this really surprised me. I did not expect Point Man to be going this deep in bracket. People don't really play fear for the main protagonist. They play fear for fear, but he still won by 64%. Sick. Look at the legends on display here. Gordon Freeman, the OG silent protagonist, the one that redefined first person shooters forever. On the other side, you have Samus, the badass bounty hunter. I think if we're doing a most iconic video game character of all time list, Samus probably wins here. But if we're just talking about FPS games, Gordon has a little bit more to say ironically. Also, my viewers really like Half-Life because I really like Half-Life. Yeah, he won by 78%. Sam Stone against Alex Mason. These are kind of hard to compare because they're really different. Alex Mason's story is a lot more serious, whereas Serious Sam is ironically more goofy. I think I would have to give it to Serious Sam for the sheer absurdity of the whole situation beyond his games and how goofy his character is. Good thing I'm not voting, I guess. Alex Mason won by 57%. That means that Alex Mason is the character that has gone the farthest out of the Call of Duty games, as it should be. It also means we're in top eight. Round one is oof. Doom Slayer against the Arbiter. I love the Arbiter as a character, I really do, but when you're going against the icon of FPS games, it's tough to convince me anyone else should win. But it's not up to me, it's up to you guys. And yeah, you agree, 78%. Even against the Arbiter, I mean, that's impressive. People like Halo a lot. Duke Nukem against BJ Blaskowitz. Blaskowitz is everything Duke Nukem wishes he was. BJ won by 63%. The lack of having any recent games and Duke Nukem Forever being bad definitely hurt him in this poll. Master Chief against Point Man. This is going to be a very tough sell for Point Man. There's definitely way more character behind Master Chief. And yeah, this one was a blowout, 83%. But Point Man got way farther than I ever expected him to. He managed to make top eight while being a silent protagonist that people generally don't think about. Speaking of silent protagonists, we got the OG silent protagonist, Gordon Freeman, against Alex Mason. Now, a lot of people were arguing that Gordon Freeman doesn't deserve to be winning because he's just a silent protagonist. They would argue that he has no personality because of that. And I can't disagree any harder. Gordon Freeman's personality is what's happening around him. It is Black Mesa. When you think of Gordon Freeman, you get an iconic image in your head. You see how he's reacting to things going on in Black Mesa, to the situation he was thrusted into. Yes, he was the player stand-in, but style protagonists are really good when done well, and Gordon is a perfect example. Alex Mason, on the other hand, was a well-written character with a good character arc, but Half-Life is such a good series and Gordon is such a strong character that he ended up winning by 80%. Eight out of 10 people decided that Gordon should win here. And that sets up our semifinals, which makes a really interesting bracket. We have the boomer shooter protagonist up top, 
and then the sort of millennial FPS protagonist at the bottom. I'm willing to call Half-Life and Halo millennial franchises. If you're a millennial, you probably grew up playing Half-Life and Halo, and Doom was just before your time. Speaking for myself, I was born in 91, which was just a couple years before Doom came out. I was definitely too young to play Doom. I really got into shooters with Half-Life and then went back to Doom. Needless to say, I do have more emotional investment in Half-Life and Halo than I do Doom, but I still really like Doom, largely because of Doom 3, Don't Hate Me. I played them all countless times at this point, but I think you get what I'm saying. Anyway, top side of the bracket, Doom Slayer, the icon of FPS games against BJ Blazkowicz, his great-great-grandfather, the OG. And this is interesting, because these two different id characters have gone two totally different directions. Yes, their combat is fast-paced in both games. Wolfenstein's combat nowhere near as fast-paced as Doom's, but you get my point. More importantly, BJ as a character was written in a way that's a lot more grounded, whereas Doom Slayer became a literal god. Which which one fits their universe more? That's really hard to say. They're both incredibly good protagonists for their games. But I think the Doom reboot really seals it for me. Doom Slayer is Doom. Doom Slayer is FPS games. And yeah, he wanted a bit of a blowout, 78%. Now we got the other side of the bracket, Master Chief against Gordon Freeman. As I keep saying, Gordon Freeman is the silent protagonist people think of, but Master Chief has a lot more character and quite a bit of a backstory. I personally like Half-Life a lot more than Halo, but as an FPS protagonist, I would have to give this one to Master Chief. And you guys agreed, 64% to Master Chief, which sets up the finals Master Chief against Doom Slayer. These two characters had one thing in mind the entire bracket. Every poll they showed up in, they just completely blew out the opponent. It wasn't close. The closest one we had was Master Chief against Gordon Freeman at 64% to 36%. Even though I have more emotional investment in Halo, personally myself here, I'm going to pick the icon of FPS games over the icon of just Xbox. And in one of the closer polls, you guys agreed 56% to Doom Slayer. He is the best FPS protagonist. Objectively, democracy wins. What's really interesting about this is that I ran this entire tournament because I did a poll on YouTube a bit earlier. I wanted to know what the best FPS protagonist was, and I could really only think of Gordon, Doomslayer, and Master Chief, and then just chucked Duke Nukem in there later. In this poll, Master Chief won. Doomslayer came in second, sizably in second place, then Gordon Freeman, then Duke Nukem. But Master Chief was really in the lead. However, when it came to the bracket, Doom Slayer won. So what happened here? Well, I think it's actually a bit obvious. Master Chief being a console exclusive for so long, those votes aren't going to go anywhere else. They're always going to go to Master Chief. However, Doom, Half-Life, and Duke Nukem are all PC games. Once you remove those protagonists, all the votes are going into Doom Slayer. They're not going to Master Chief. Now, as I said, I streamed all of these results to Twitch, but I also made a new tier list on Tier List Maker with all of these characters, and ranked all the characters myself. I'm only going to be showing you my S and F tier here. If you want to see the rest of this, I put it over on my second channel. My second channel is uh, more fun video gamey stuff. It's Jarek the Gaming Dragon Plays. You should check it out. I'm really wanting to expand over there. I hope that channel blows up. I don't expect it to, but I don't know. I'm having fun with it. I'll also link the tier list maker I used in a pinned comment on that video if you want to make it yourself. Maybe tweet it at me or something. I don't know. Thank all you guys for watching this video. It's been different. If you like it and want to see more of this kind of stuff, link it around. Maybe I'll do a tournament with antagonists. Dragon, we'll see you next video.